What you doing selling that? You don't own it. I'm Snakebite Cortez. This is Full Media Commandos, and we're talking copyright. As we grow and go together, we should all be participating in each other's positioning for a prosperous future. Although these ideas can apply to all creators, I'm going to be pulling from my experiences at comic book conventions. And the attitudes and posturings of the artists as an example to learn from so we can build our empires on solid foundations. Remember back in the day? Conventions were a lot smaller. The people that went to them went because they loved the medium of comic books. Fans would come to find the hard to find books, meet the creators, and possibly get an original sketch. Because that's all artists really sold back then, besides their original pages. Now, making prints, now that was for the serious investor. Because back then we didn't have desktop publications, we didn't have printers like Epson, laser printers. It was all an idea, it was like the future. Plus that shit was expensive. So the creators of those comics just grew used to the idea of supplying fans with sketches freely. The companies didn't care. They weren't in the market for selling sketches. So there was no confusion in the market. So as the technology grew and became more accessible, the artist just naturally got used to the idea of original sketches turning into original prints, sketchbooks, t-shirts. The thing is, none of it was legal. Now remember, the copyright protects the IP holder and gives them the discretion to do what they will and enforce when they want. But for decades now, the artists that go to these conventions have grown so used to the idea of their original sketch translating into an original reproduction that nobody is thinking they are doing anything wrong. And even the big companies throughout the years as they were going through their own growing pains they didn't know how to position themselves with this issue as well. Now, it was kind of like an unspoken thing that these artists, us artists, were allowed to do that because our pay scales were so low. So this was an obvious way to make a supplemental income and let them eat cake, as they say. The thing is, it all wasn't legal. Now, some of us saw this as a slippery slope and that eventually all of this would go the way of the dodo. And here we are. Warner Brothers has owned DC for a while, Disney now owns Marvel, and these two big empires are in the market to sell everything. And now they want to enforce copyright. Surprise, surprise. And we have all these artists who've been doing all this illegal activity for so long that they just now think it's normal and legal. But at the end of the day, none of that shit belongs to us. Nothing. I'm an artist too, and I've worked at conventions most of my career. I've worked for the big companies, the small companies, and I've done independent work too. The thing is, whenever I was selling product, I was either doing my own thing or I got permission first. I think original art falls into a different category than reproductions, but I would put money on it that a Disney lawyer would disagree. I think you can't control or tell people what to create on their own time. Whether we're drawing, making music, or whatever, art transcends. So like a musician playing a cover at a club, on the street, at your house, you can't really control that. And I don't think you want to. But as soon as that same artist decides to put that cover on a, uh, on a recording and puts it on a CD and distributes it to people who are giving him money, now that's business and you got to get a proper license. Once you get into the business side of this game, you got to play by these rules, or you're going to lose, eventually. Sure, I wouldn't disagree. Corporations are shady, but those laws they set in place are there to protect you, too. Well, at least, are supposed to. <laughs> Please. Your version of Superman isn't going to enrich any society. If anything, you creating original content is going to build a society. Get out of the box in those dirty red Superman panties. Everyone's been there and is nasty and boring. Don't let the sarcasm fool you. I love comic books. I love to see lots of different versions of people's stuff. But at the end of the day, you're not entitled to those things. This is a business. It's not just free for all. 
This isn't the wild, wild west. Although sometimes I wouldn't mind carrying some six guns into a business meeting, if you know what I'm saying. But <laughs> let's keep it real. This doesn't belong to us. It's fun, but it doesn't belong to us. Don't you want something new? Don't you want to create your own ideas? Why do you want to have to answer to somebody? Be free to express yourself. Master intent. It's the only master I serve. Well, when the shit hits the fan, what do you think's gonna happen? Look, the fans are there to love the characters, and I love the fans. We need the fans, but go get fans that love your characters. Go get fans that love your ideas, and then you can do whatever you want to do. Sure, it's harder, but nothing worth anything is easy. You gotta work hard, be self-made, and then you can stand strong. What is fan-made? Aren't we all fans? Calling it fan-made, to me, at this point, seems like a way to get around the legality of it all. To play the gray area. It's starting to sound a little shady in some cases. But with that said, I like fan-made stuff. I just did a fan-made production myself called Storm Growing. I didn't raise any money to do it. I didn't sell it to anybody. I put it up on the internet for free for everybody to watch. I used education, entertainment, parody, and satire. I fell into the copyright category called fair use. So the project's 100% mine, as long as I don't try to sell it. Nope, that's a myth. Sorry. I kind of resent this idea, actually. What it's saying is, we don't have to go through the same legal system as the rest of you guys. We could do what we want that we don't have to go through the same legal challenges and state regulations in order to raise money, hire professionals, build a set, rent studio space, distribute content to uh, uh, customers based off the pre-sales. And you did all that because you're a fan. Once you step into that arena, you're a production company. Nothing more, nothing less. If you raise money you didn't have before, that's a profit. Did you know the NFL is a nonprofit organization? Now, if non, not making a profit is a defense to use other people's ideas and creations, wouldn't it be fucked up if the NFL took your idea and did whatever they wanted with it? They raised money to produce it, and it ended up being a promotional platform for them at the end of the day, even if they technically didn't make money. The NFL. Ouch, that would hurt. Imagine Disney and Warner Brothers setting up a whole nonprofit division and using their team to develop all these people's ideas based on the concept it's fan made. That's insane. Look, the fight ain't over. What we should be fighting about is why is everyone's rate so low? Why do pay scales stay 20, 30 years old? Artists should be negotiating for better pay for their contributions and more control over their creations. It's not going to be easy, but it's better than fighting over scraps and essentially fighting over stuff we don't own. And in the meantime, negotiate with your employers to sell those prints at conventions so you can be an authority of those reproductions and those kind of positions would help the market thrive. <laughs> what about you guys? I'm sorry, I don't mean to be harsh, but you haven't broken in yet. Get back to work. You're not entitled to anything. You gotta work harder to get into the game. It's as simple as that. We all go through it. This attitude will only help our community grow stronger. Letting amateurs make the rules is a weak position. Raise the bar, and when it's your time, shine. Until then, let's get back to work. Or come up with your own shit and work hard to build that like the rest of us. This will create a healthy market where people can prosper legally with all the protections. Look, and crowdfunding is for you too. There's lots of people on that platform that are really prospering right now. So get your game tight and get in the game. Personally, I think that's where everything's going. I mean, artists are making a living off crowdfunding. They don't have to go look for jobs from these big companies. Another way to make the market healthy. I have a dream that all artists are self-sustaining and that these big companies 
they got to adjust their pay scales and their work methods and how they do business with artists in order to be competitive and pull in the talent so that they can stay in the game. Are you confused? Meditate. And then get back to work because you want to own your ideas. You don't want to borrow them from other people. Just look at the big success stories. They did it themselves and so should you. I only supply information and perspectives from as many sources as possible. Because if you're a commando, it's all about staying alive and keeping it moving. And for that, you're going to need every resource at your disposal. So take what you need, go out and succeed. If you like our videos, hit the like button or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. And make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Keep it moving, commandos. science teacher, Mr. Lynch, he used to always fucking, he, he spoke in this microphone, Mr. Lynch, he'd walk around the class with this little microphone on a, on a popsicle stick, <laughs> and he would talk to you, and he had speakers all around the motherfucker, and you didn't know where he was in the room, he'd just walk up and down the room, talk to these speakers, and be like right up on your ass, and if you, you're picking your nose or some shit, he'd come up right up to you and be like, are you confused? Meditate! <laughs>